everyone i hope you're doing amazing happy november 1st <laughs> i cannot believe we're already in november really i don't know where this year has been um but thank you so much for being here today and joining me in this video for this time i i wanted to do a, something a little bit different uh, i feel like in the past videos i've been showing you a lot of my process and my painting process and for this one i have been just um um i just step back and i was thinking to myself what will be helpful not just for you but also for me and um if you're starting or if you're also struggling i, I guess like every artist just struggles <laughs> with something regardless but these were just a few things that i would think um it would be nice to know before so um, and oh, they're a little bit random but just so you know um, I've been building my own uh, canvases, or well, my own panel, not panels, <laughs> supports. And even though it sounds so silly, but even the process is so, so nice because you um, sort of feel like you build it yourself and you take pride in it and you take care more of your materials. Basically, getting to know your materials is very, very important when you are um, starting to work in the art field. And I've been enjoying it very, very much, especially for my commissions <laughs> that I adore, by the way. There were two puppies and they were adorable. I really, really enjoy making those. Um, and by the way, this was the biggest commission that I've done until now. The second thing that I would say would be to, um, I guess, try to find I try to see the beauty in everything, even the smallest little thing. Sometimes, and this happens to me a lot, when I am in my in my apartment and I'm I'm complaining to myself. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to paint. I have nothing beautiful to paint. And then, in truth, beauty is just everywhere around us. So um, it's it's all up to you to how you perceive things. Because even uh, the smallest of us can change the course of the world. <laughs> I stole that from. Galadriel, what she said to Frodo, <laughs> but uh, this uh, this little guy was in my um, stairs, and I picked him up and I painted him or her him in a um, in a locket. But really, it's just everywhere. It, it's all about how you choose to see things. Another thing that I would tell myself is to paint things that you like and things that you don't like. <laughs> paint a lot. And every time that you paint, always try your best and always give your best try. Even if you're thinking, oh, this is just a study. It doesn't matter. Um, it matters that you always, always give um, your best. And I had to remind myself this sometimes because when I'm doing like small studies, for example, I'm thinking, oh, this doesn't matter. This is just a little study. But no, you, you always have to focus and you always have to concentrate. Another thing that I would tell myself is to, of course, paint from life as much as you can. Um, here I'm just I'm painting these beautiful, beautiful roses, which I love, but they're so hard to paint. <laughs> I cannot uh, express enough how amazing it is to paint from life and how much you learn from life. And it really doesn't matter what you're painting, um, but how you paint it and how you express it. And this just when I started painting life, which was way, way later in in my uh, art career, I suppose, it was such a huge difference. And you just, within one painting, I feel like you learn so many more lessons because you can take a really close look and, and it's just, I don't know, I'm sure that you, that you know this too, if you've ever tried it. We tried it also in college to paint from life, but I have not done it <laughs> until very recently that I that I started to do it again. And it's just so amazing, but so hard to. Something. 
struggling with and I still struggle very often is the imposter syndrome that I think every artist has at some point or has their whole life basically you are your worst enemy and um, you doubt a lot of your things you doubt a lot of your abilities and not it doesn't happen as often as as before but it is true that sometimes i just i don't know i, I crumble and and it it really sucks because <laughs> because you are in your mind and in your body and and if you don't value your art and appreciate your art it's just it's draining and there's no moving forward so i will just tell myself to believe that you can that there's always place a place to learn but that you should just uh, also <laughs> be proud of your accomplishments there's nothing wrong on on being proud of them and i think for example when i opened my store i i felt like i don't know i felt such a shame like oh nobody's gonna buy my art and just putting all this pressure on other people when i should be um myself who is bringing myself up and being fair with my work but this, I think this is with time, you, you learn, you learn to, to see different perspectives. And I'm in a very happy place in that sense, that I, I can trust my own judgment in my work and my abilities. Um, and that's why uh, sometimes I was so hesitant to take commissions, because I thought it is never going to be good, or they're not going to like it, or um, just that silly pressure that we put um, ourselves in. So enjoying every step of the way. And just embracing it and knowing that you can um, that you can always uh, improve and there's always room for improvement finding your own personal style in your art is complicated <laughs> sometimes but it's it's is important I think and um, it takes time and I think it is mostly through practice and through that practice you're going to find it so don't worry too much about it because it will come naturally but I took this class that I wanted to talk a little bit about it's how to find your own style as an artist by Laurie Ann Gonzalez and um, she explains very nicely she's a painter herself of course even though she paints with acrylic but that doesn't really matter um, but she explains how she found it and also the comparison between her old style and her current style and also she says um, a lot of a lot about copying the masters which is something that i um, i encourage all of you and myself um, and it's something that i wasn't doing as often as i should have and how her by copying the masters she found um, just a lot of resources and inspiration but she also points out that you just can't copy someone's style basically but with um, in that process of copying and comparing, that's when you learn and you absorb a lot of the knowledge because even the masters used to copy the other masters too. So it's nothing new, uh, but she does point out that um, uh, you should copy someone that is basically not uh, currently alive i suppose and um i also i always think that copying the old masters is the best way to to learn and i'm doing it all the time and every time that i do it i get just i don't know very refreshed so i highly recommend it um so this is a class that i found really really interesting and um as always this is through skillshare so i'm going to leave my uh link in my description box um so just so you know if you click on it the first thousand people you're going to get one month um of free skillshare um, trial and i hope this class and this topic um is helpful because it's uh, not that easy to find your own style and it's something that it can go for quite a while so and that would conclude my <laughs> little list of advice um, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, really I, I hope that this was a little bit refreshing and that it was helpful somehow and oh, oh my goodness I'm going to choke um, uh, but yes thank you so so much for the support and for just being here and watching this it, um, you are all wonderful and thank you so so much for watching Mwah. bye bye bye